Hi, I'm Glyn Dewis. Welcome to episode 40. And this week, I want to show you how you can add realistic reflections into glasses, which is all about those small things in retouching making the big difference. All right, so for this week, then we're going to use this pitch that you can see on the screen now. This is one of mine called the Assassin. Now, as a side note, I'm going to be releasing a full length downloadable tutorial very soon, showing all the stages that you go through to the retouching to end up with the final image. So you can see as I'm just clicking through all the different groups here, all the different stages of retouching to eventually get to the final image. Now, like I said, that'll be out very soon. But what I want to cover in this week's episode is something of the, the little detail stuff. We'll Bit close uh, is actually on the glasses. Now, if I turn all the layers off just above, we'll go down to the glasses layer here and I'll turn it off and on, off and on. You can see we've got a reflection of some kind of a cityscape. Now, I want to show you how we can do that. We're also going to show how we can maintain some of these highlights. And also, I want to show you just a few little things about using smart objects and how they can help you out. Okay, so let's open up the glasses layer here. These are the two layers that contain the bits that have our cityscape in. So for now, we can actually get rid of those because the first thing I need to do is to make a selection of the actual glasses, the actual lens parts here. Now you can use whatever method you want to do that, but because pretty much the actual lens part and the outside frame, the contrast between them is very, very close. I think something like the quick selection tool would struggle. So my preference for this would be the pen tool. Now this is a tool that most people get a little, well not most, but people who start out in Photoshop get a little bit hesitant about using because it can be a little confusing. But all you need to be doing is just clicking and dragging and using the command key or control key on your keyboards, depending on what you're using, Mac or Windows. Now I'm not going to go into how you use the pen tool. There's a video on my YouTube channel called the pen tool made easy and that will show you how you can use it but I'm just going to use it now just to make a selection here around the actual rim of the glasses and I'm just going to use my command key to reposition these points here like so I'll make a selection just of this one lens here and then we'll kind of like jump forward once um, rather than having you guys sat there watching I'll then make a selection of the other lens as well so let's just bring that around to there and we'll just join that point up. Okay, so that's one of them uh, selected there. I'll now do the other lens, so I'll just pause the video, jump forward, and then we'll carry on. All right, so I've actually now selected the other lens. So let's now go to the paths, which is where these are going to be selected. Um, now, at the moment, only the right-hand side one has got the actual pointers on it. So I'm going to click off here for a second, then click on the thumbnail of the work path. So we can see we've got these paths going around both lenses. Now, I want to save these as a selection. So what I'm going to do, down at the very, very bottom of my screen here, we've got this little circle with this dotted line on. When I click on that, that's going to convert the path or what I've just done with the pen tool there, and it's going to convert it into our marching ants, which is what we're mainly kind of familiar with when we make selections. Now I'm going to click back onto the layers, and I'm going to go to the uh, Select menu at the top of the screen and go Save Selection, and we'll call that glasses, just so it's nice, quick, and easy to come back to whenever we need it. So we'll click OK, and then we'll go to the select menu and choose deselect. Now, the next thing we need to do is find our cityscape. So I'm going to navigate to a folder on my computer, and I'm going to use the word play, or the command rather, place embedded. Now, depending on what version of Photoshop you're on, I'm on the Creative Cloud, so the update now has got these two commands here, place embedded or place linked. Now, I'm going to use the one place embedded. You may have a version of Photoshop that just says play. So just use that one. It's exactly the same as this one here, Place Embedded. So we'll click on Place Embedded. I'll now go to a folder on my computer and I'm going to choose this London scene here and click Place. Now the only reason I do that is because it's kind of time efficient. It puts that actual uh, image there into the document I'm working on. Now you can see it's actually quite big there, so I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to hold down my Shift and Alt or Shift and Option keys and just scale it down. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of scale it. I can zoom in a little bit now. I'm going to scale it so it actually covers the actual area of the glasses, both lenses. So let's drag it into position somewhere like that. And we can always reposition it a bit more later on. Let's just lower the opacity a little bit. So we can see that we've got it there covering over those lenses. So now it's in position. All I need to do is press enter on my keyboard or just press the little tick icon at the top of the screen to get rid of the transform handles. Then I'm going to go to the select menu at the top of the screen, choose load selection. And where we have channel, we've got a drop down menu. And this is where 
where we'll find the one when we saved the glasses. The actual lenses we selected, we'll see it in there. So I'll choose glasses, then click OK, and we get the marching ants now we can see on here. This kind of reminds me of the, uh, the Predator movie there. I don't know why. So now we've got the outline of the glasses shown with these marching ants. To, so that we only see the cityscape within the lenses, all we need to do now is come to the layers panel at the very, very bottom, just click once on the layer mask icon. So everything outside of the lenses we can't see, and it looks as if the actual cityscape is now reflecting in the glasses. Now, this isn't the finished product, but it's a very, very good starting point for us. Now, as a side note, if you wanted to reposition the cityscape within the glasses now, what you couldn't do is just get your move tool, click and drag, because then you're going to move both the layer mask and the cityscape. What you need to do is come over to the layers panel where you've got the thumbnail of the cityscape and the layer mask next to it. In between the two, there's a little chain link icon. If you click on that so it disappears, the thumbnail of the cityscape and the layer mask are now no longer connected. So I'm going to click on the cityscape, get my cursor into the document, then I can move it around and reposition it within the glasses to say how I actually want it to be. So let's go for something like there is looking better. And then I will put that little uh, chain icon between the two again, just by pressing in between the actual thumbnail and the layer mask like so. Now, the next thing I want to do, well, actually at this point here, I could kind of say, well, we're kind of finished here. We could lower the opacity so that now we've got the cityscape kind of reflecting in there. And that would generally be okay. But in, I think, almost all the videos that I've actually created now and put out every single week, I've always told people that it's the small things that make the big difference when it comes to retouching. So what I wanted to do at this stage here was actually give the actual um, cityscape a bit of a distortion because these lenses here, they're not perfectly flat. They've got like a little curve to them. So anything reflected into them would also have that kind of curve added. Now, when we brought this thumbnail of the cityscape into our picture, we used the place command. So what that means is it comes into our document, but it also comes in as a smart object. So now when I click just the once on that thumbnail, I can then go to the filter menu at the top of the screen and go to distort and pinch. And this is now going to be used as a smart Smart filter. So any changes I make now, if they're not right, I can just very easily go back in to make them how I want to be. Now this is quite an, uh, an old kind of dialog box now within Photoshop where we've got this little mesh. We don't see any alterations in real time inside our document. We kind of have to do it by guesswork, I suppose, really. Now also, because this document was quite big, the cityscape, and we kind of scaled it down, then used the layer mask, we can't see it in the preview box just here. So so we need to zoom out to try and find it first of all, and there it is. Click inside it, drag it to the center, and then I'll zoom in. So now we can see those actual, um, the lenses there with the cityscape in. But now we're gonna move this little slider to try and distort these glasses here, the actual, um, the reflection. So I'll take it to around about sort of 14 or 15, something like that. This isn't the best dialog box to get the view of it, but we will see that now when I click OK, we can see that effect applied within the glasses. Now it's kind of moved them up just a bit too much for me, but I'm gonna go back into the pinch filter now just to sort of reduce that distortion a little bit. And I can do that just by clicking on the name of the filter now in the layers panel. If I double click on that, it brings up the pinch dialog box and I'll just back out. So rather than being at minus 15, we'll go down to around about minus nine, minus 10, click OK, and we'll see that change then reflected within the glasses. So now we've added in the reflection to the glasses, we've distorted it a little bit. A couple of other little things we could do now is, uh, we know that in the final picture there's gonna be like a color tint added to it, like that nice bluish tone. So I'm gonna desaturate the actual reflection here. So I'm gonna go to the top of the layers panel here, right to the very, very top of my screen. Now I've got these adjustment layers. I'm just gonna click on the hue and saturation, and I'm gonna desaturate them. So I'll take the desaturation slider and bring it over over to the left. Now, if I zoom out of my image, you can see that that's actually desaturating. Let's just go before and after, before and after. That's just actually desaturating the whole image. I only wanted to do uh, desaturate the actual reflection in the glasses, which is the layer directly below. So then I'm gonna click on this little icon here, which is the clipping mask. When I do that, the desaturation we've just done only applies within the actual reflection on the glasses. Let me turn that up before and after, before and after. 
let's just close that down and then we can go onto the thumbnail of the reflection and then just lower the opacity down and the great thing is when we do that all the reflections on the glasses the original kind of highlights here are now showing through as we lower the opacity so it adds a bit much more to that uh, realism there now one final little thing we can do just to finish off this look within the glass here and really add to that realism is add a little bit of shading around the outside so we can go to the thumbnail now of our uh, cityscape where it says London just here the name of the layer if I double click to the right hand side of that name it brings up the layer style dialog box now let's just zoom in on these glasses just a little bit more so you can see what I'm doing and I'm going to choose uh, one of the options on the left hand side here I'm going to choose in a shadow now when we click on in a shadow we've got this angle disc right in the center part i'm going to put that so it's pointing directly upwards and then all i'm going to do if you look now within the actual area here of the glasses i'm going to bring up the choke and the size like so it's a little bit like that maybe the distance bring that up just a touch as well just play around with these three sliders the distance the choke and the size to add a little bit of shading around the outside of the lenses. So now it's just lower the opacity a little bit. And let's just turn that before, after, before, after. I think when you've got the glasses, they're not gonna be the same shade all the way around like it would be without this. I think just by adding in that little bit of a shadow going around the whole area of the shades there, sorry, of the lenses, it adds a little bit more realism to it. And also I think it exaggerates the curve of the actual lens because we know when we do like dodging and burning, anywhere that's bright is appearing towards the viewer, anywhere that's dark is going back. So by us leaving the middle of the lens brighter than the outside, it's kind of like like exaggerating or selling the fake, that phrase that we use a lot now of making the lenses look as if they've got that little curve. But you can see relatively quickly, or very simply as well, how we can actually change the look of the glasses from go from before, after, before, and after. And I'll be covering much, much more of this in the whole tutorial to eventually we can go to the final look, which is this picture here. But that's just a quick look to see how you can do the small things that make the big difference. And in this case, just by adding in a realistic reflection within the glasses. Okay, so there you go. Like I've always said, it's the small things in retouching that make the big difference. And I love just really paying attention to all those finer details. Just out of interest, I wonder if any of you noticed in a recent picture that I did where we've got the mice all over the cheese on that little food board there, did anybody notice the reflection of the mouse in the knife that I added in? See, you may not have done it, but to me, it's just those small things that I thoroughly enjoy doing. But they do make the big difference in your final retouching. Now, definitely check out, keep an eye out even for the full length version of the tutorial coming out for this assassin. There's gonna be a lot of little things in there that I think you're really gonna like. But when it comes to tutorials, also definitely head on over to my web store. I've just recently, in the last week and a bit or so, added another tutorial, which is the athlete. And that takes you through a full composite, it goes in a lot of detail about selections, uh, how to create a completely new background from a background that was not really the kind of thing that we wanted. So definitely head on over and check that out. But listen, that's all for this week. Before I go, make sure if you haven't already that you click on the subscribe button that's the only payment that I ask from you guys is that you just support me by uh, clicking on the little subscribe button there and also letting other people know about it I want to really try and build this channel up now so we can get one kind of like hub for loads and loads and loads of different things in and it's the support from you guys that helps that to grow but hey like I said that's all for this week have a good one and I'll see you next time